Well, I want to I want to introduce our guest speaker today, and uh, he's a great friend of ours. Dr. Chand has been uh, involved in ministry for many a countless number of years. Um, he is uh, vi- had been has been very influential in my wife and I's life. He has been a mentor to us from afar, and then we had the privilege of getting to know him. He's been at Freedom House several times. He's helped us when we moved into this facility. He's helped us with the systems and the structure of how we do church and why we do church. But even more importantly than that, he has influenced around the world. He is on the the, the board with John Maxwell. He influences presidents and leaders around the world in different nations around the uh, around our, our our country he speaks at churches he influences large ministries he's written several books and i'm just honored that he would come and uh, share with us today freedom house could you stand up on your feet and give my favorite indian a big welcome dr sam chan come on give him a big freedom house welcome love you buddy thank you man Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please be seated, please be seated, wow. I gotta get back to my gas station pretty soon, so let's, 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 let's do this quickly, let's do this quick. I'm losing money right now. Uh, I mean, you know, you can't get no good help anymore, and my Indian friends are in India right now watching me, so. <laughs> well, hello, Freedom House. Hello, 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 what a great church, huh? I want you to know I just love Pastor Troy, Pastor Penny. Amazing pastors, are they not? Can we thank God for some amazing friends, just good people, great communicators, but most of all, just love God's people. And I'm just delighted to be here. I'm glad to have my wife Brenda here with me. Uh, We've been married for about 38 years now, and uh, I was told the first 37 are the hardest. It's easy after that, and so uh, that's where we are at right now. Uh, it's, all, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, if you can put uh, the screen that I have there for you, if you get your phones out, if you get your phones out, I want to give you something free. Every Tuesday, every Tuesday, I send out a three-minute leadership video. It's free. Everyone say free. free. Do you know how difficult it is for an Indian to say free? <laughs> <laughs> Don't try that at my gas station, but uh, <laughs> if you will just put in that number 66866 and put my name in there, Chand, uh, and after that, it'll ask you for your email address every Tuesday, three-minute leadership video, and uh, Pastor Troy, Pastor Penny have uh, been part of that. It just, it just goes all over the world. So all of you are watching me online, if you just want to go to Tuesdays with Sam Chand, uh, you, can, you can click on, on that as well. Uh, that is free, but what is not free are a couple books I brought. Uh, this is called What's Shaking Your Ladder, 15 Challenges as Matter Who You Are You Will Face in Life, How to Keep Your Focus, How to Deal with Conflict, How to Make Good Decisions, How to Do Some Strategic Planning, How to Leave a Legacy. So 15 topics in there. And then... All of us are dynamic, moving people. We are never, we were not the same as last year. You know, if somebody walks up to you five years from now and says, hey, you have never changed. You're still the same. It's not a compliment. <laughs> it simply means you got stuck and you are still stuck. This is called ladder shifts. There are eight shifts in your life that are going on. New passions, new purpose, new people. And this will be available. So after the service... I'll be happy to meet you out there and sign your books for you. If not, sign them yourself. Nobody will know the difference. <laughs> Mark chapter 5, 15. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. We'll get to that in just a moment. We'll get to it in just a moment. Have you ever wondered how you ended up at Freedom House? Okay. How many of you are born and raised in Charlotte. Can I see your hands? One, two, seven, ten, twelve. Okay, maybe thirty. Out of a room full of people. So all of you are immigrants from somewhere. You came from somewhere. So how did you end up in Charlotte? And how did you end up at Freedom House? How, how, 
did life converge so that you could end up here? And then how did you end up at the 1030 service? I want to talk to you about three simple things. Why me? Why here? So what? Everyone together. Why me? Why here? So what? Okay, get your hands out. Get your hands out. Get your hands out. This is the most exercise you're going to get all day. So here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. Why me? Why here? Okay, we're going to do the so what again. I need some attitude on that, you know? You know, like somebody took your parking spot right there and you went like, I saw you when I was pulling in. I, saw, I know who you are. I won't call you out right now, but I, it's like, I had my blinkers on. Can't you see? But somebody's again, and now you have to parse something else. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Why me? Why here? So what? Okay, let's do it without the words now. Without the words. Without the words. One, two, three. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Begins verse 16. Talking about Jesus. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees, worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off his purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Verse 21. And they compel one Simon, everyone says Simon, Simon, a Cyrenian who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Everyone said Rufus, to bear his cross. So here's the scenario. Jesus has been betrayed by one of his friends, Judas. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He gets arrested there. Now he has been spending all night shunting between Pilate's palace and Herod's court. They have beat him. They have mocked him. They have pummeled his face. Isaiah tells us that you could not recognize him. He was just, it was just like a boxer in the 12th round. You know, you, everything is just one pulpy mess. His, blood, his beard has been plucked. They have just spit on him. They also tell us that they put a crown of thorns on his head and beat it in with a stick. His back is bruised and bloodied because they have been scourging him with, a, with that whip. Then they put his own clothes back on him and is immediately soaking in blood. They put a 150 pound cross on his back and say, carry it now for your crucifixion down Calvary's way to Golgotha. He's coming out of Jerusalem, bruised, bloodied, exhausted, demoralized, emotionally distraught. He's been praying in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before till his sweat was like drops of blood. He's coming out of Jerusalem with a mob around him, led by Roman soldiers. Freeze that moment for a minute. Back here in the city of Cyrene. So where is Cyrene? If you can think about the African continent, the top of the African continent, the Mediterranean Ocean, top of the African continent. There's a country called Libya. We know that from the news. In Libya, there's a city called Tripoli. Tripoli is now modern city for what is known as Cyrene. Now some of you are looking at me like, how did I find out? It's in your Bible. In the back of the Bible, there's a section in color called maps. <laughs> the only place you can find some crayons to do stuff with. So there's Cyrene. Cyrene is 1,800 miles from Jerusalem. 1,800 miles from Jerusalem. Simon's got two boys, Alexander and Rufus. They decide they're going to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, which is the holiest of all the feasts for the Jewish people. 1,800 miles on foot across Libya, across Egypt, into the peninsula, pen, uh, Palestinian peninsula, and then into Jerusalem itself. Three months on foot. Anybody in here ever taken a road trip with your kids? You, have, you barely back out of the driveway and they want to know what? 
That's why all vacations start homicidal. <laughs> If you ask me one more time, ask your mama the next time. So Simon with his two boys start trekking towards Jerusalem. It's the last night. They can see the flickering lights of Jerusalem in the distance. They wake up early in the morning all excited. We are there. Three months on foot. We are there. We are tired. We are ready to go to the feast of Passover. As they are moving into it that morning. It's the mid-morning. And all of a sudden they start seeing a big crowd moving their way. They can't make out what they're saying, but somebody, though they're yelling something. As they stand over there, moving towards Jerusalem, they start hearing the voices. Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! As they keep moving towards Jerusalem, this mob keeps moving towards them. Mob comes close enough. Simon and his two boys step back to let the mob go by. They're Roman soldiers, and behind Roman soldiers is a man who's carrying a cross. He's all bloodied. He's all bruised. He can barely carry the cross. Simon doesn't know who this guy is. We know he is Jesus. But Simon has been traveling for three months. There's no CNN or Fox or uh, whatever you watch or don't watch. Is he has been reading the Jerusalem Times? Obviously, he's a convict. Obviously, he's going to be killed on this cross. Just step back. As Simon comes in front of Jesus, as Jesus carries the cross, right in front of Simon, Jesus falters, falls, the cross beside him, unable to physically carry the cross. You know, the rest of the story, he did carry the cross for Jesus. As Simon carried the cross for Jesus, I want to give you three quick lessons. Number one, Simon was there. Simon was where? There. Simon was there. How many of you would agree that nothing in the life of Jesus happened by accident? His birth was foretold, his crucifixion was foretold, his resurrection was foretold, where he would be born was foretold. When we remember when the wise men came looking for Jesus, they studied the scriptures and they were able to tell uh, uh, the, the Herod that Jesus would be born in the city of Bethlehem. So everything, his lineage was, it's, it's all there. So nothing happened in the life of Jesus by accident. So do you think that the meeting up with Simon on the road to Calvary was an accident. No. I want to hold this thought. Jesus is coming out of Jerusalem. It's just been overnight. Simon started his journey when? Three months ago. Three months ago, Simon is going this way. One night ago, Jesus is coming out like that. And the meat on the road. I'm here to tell you, Simon was there and you are here. Because you think your journey started somewhere out there. But God has the freedom house moving toward you as well. And here you are on a collision course with destiny in your life. You are here on purpose. Simon was there. You are here. And God is bringing your lives together. And we don't even know it. Brenda and I got invited to speak at a church uh, in Augusta, Georgia, where the masters is played and big old church. I'd never been there before, never met the pastor before. Uh, so uh, we, uh, we were going there on Sunday. The pastor said, hey, listen, since you're going to be here, could you meet with my leaders on Saturday night for dinner? You know, free food, I'm there. So, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, Uh, they picked us up at the hotel, took us to this beautiful restaurant. In the back of the restaurant was this private room, big oval table, big, one big oval table like that. We were the last ones to get there. So, so if this is the oval table, they set us right in the middle, Brenda and I together. And uh, I'd never met them before, so I didn't even know which one was the pastor kind of thing. And uh, so we're sitting there. As soon as we sat down, everyone stopped talking and looking at us like, Like the new panda bear in the zoo, you know? 
So, you know, Brendan, I've been married for so long, you know, you figure out that little knee-knocking language. So she says, let's get out of here. And so, but we have not ate yet. <laughs> the main event is the food. Later out uh, to find out who she was, there was a lady sitting at the oval at the end over there, Rhonda. She says, in case you're wondering why we're staring at you. Okay. Now remember, this is 2012, February of 2012. She said, we started our church in 1986 in Augusta. Just like you all did, 19, so they started theirs in 1986, planted a church. They said, in the first week, we got a prophetic word. And the prophetic word was, there'll be a man by the name of Sam from India who's going to come and speak to you, and when he does, there'll be a shift in your church. She said, we have a prayer meeting every week. And one of the standing items in our prayer list is, where is this man from India by the name of Sam? <laughs> you, Sam. <laughs> you from India. 1986, God they gave them a word. They had no idea, I had no idea. But God was moving all of our lives one step, one step, one step, one step, one step towards each other. You got to know God's in charge of your life. You got to know he's moving your life. You got to know you're going somewhere in life. You got to know God's got a plan for your life. You got to know there's destiny inside of your life. Okay, everyone get your fingers out, get your fingers out. Start moving them closely. Slowly, slowly, not that fast. Life doesn't move that fast. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And that is how God is doing your life today. Simon was there and you are here. The second lesson I learned is sometimes God will force you to do things you don't want to do. Look with me in verse 21. And they compel one Simon. You know what compel means? You didn't volunteer. <laughs> That's what compel means. You didn't want to do it. Jesus has fallen. Simon is standing. The Roman soldiers are there. We still got to get the convict called Jesus and his cross to Golgotha. How do we do that? Well, the Roman soldiers could have carried the cross, one of the options, but they weren't going to do that. They were the occupiers. They could have asked some of the Jewish people to carry the cross, but that was not cool because if the Jewish people touched the cross, they'd become unclean. Became unclean, they would not be able to participate in the feast of the Passover, which is the biggest feast all year. So you become unclean, you cannot do that. What other options do they have? Oh, they look at this guy, Simon. They could tell by the clothes he was wearing that he's not from around here. He's from somewhere else. And they say to him, you carry his cross. <laughs> Simon probably said, hey, whoa, I'm not from here. You all figure it out. I've been traveling for three months. I got jet lag. <laughs> I don't know. But Simon put up some resistance. Till the Roman soldier pulled out his sword and poked him in the chest. He got motivated <laughs> to pick up the cross of Jesus. I want you to know, as soon as he picked up the cross, the blood of Jesus, which was on the cross, was now on Simon's back. Mm. But in the moment, Simon got disqualified from going to the feast. How many of you know, in his greatest disappointment, God had the greatest appointment? Simon had been traveling for three months on foot with one purpose in mind, only one purpose in mind, one focus. I'm gonna go with my boys to the feast of the Passover. But in just one instant, this man he's never met before, He's carrying his cross. He does not know who Jesus is. Obviously, nobody else does either. 
But when you come to those places in your life and you feel like you've run into a brick wall, you got to know there's an appointment waiting for you in the middle of all that's going on. You got to know that in the middle of your greatest disappointment, he was not able to, now listen, he was not able to go to the feast, but he's the only man in history who helped Jesus. Because see, at that moment, heaven wouldn't help him. And people couldn't help him. The only time in the Bible that Jesus is totally helpless. Simon shows up. Some of you are here today and online and you're feeling the poke of the Holy Spirit compelling you to do something. You've been making excuses. You've been giving good reasons. Don't you understand? I got this going on. You know, I can't do that. I'm not educated enough. Don't have enough money. You know, that's too difficult. And you've been giving excuses, but I want to feel the poke of the Holy Spirit saying to you, you can do it. You should do it. This is a divine appointment in your life. Somebody needs to be willing to say, yes, yes, I will do that. Yes, I will forgive. Yes, I will do that. Yes, I will go there. Yes, I will say there. Somebody needs to say, Yes. The third thing. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. This answers so what? Romans chapter 16. Verse 13. Romans chapter 16 verse 13 says this. Salute who? Rufus. Remember the boy Rufus? Chosen in the Lord and his mother and mine. Uh, if you can leave that up there. Uh, no, that's not. That's Romans 16, 14. Uh, can you go back to 16, 13? It's coming up in just a moment. It's probably my mess up. I said probably because I don't want to admit to it. So... Uh, <laughs> Listen, always leave room to finagle yourself out of it, right? So, so, so that's, that's, what, that's, that's what we're doing over here. Romans chapter 16, verse 13. Uh, when you find it, uh, put it up there. No big deal. Yes, it is. So this, it's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> Salute Rufus. Now, here's the background behind that. Paul is writing the letter of Romans. He's never been to Rome before. This is his first trip there. He's about to go there. This is his own introductory letter. I'm coming. When I come there, this is how I think. This is how what I do. This is how I feel about this, that, the other, and, and so on and so forth. And then he is concluding the last chapter, which is chapter 16. And you know how you, after you've written something, you say, say hi to so-and-so and give my regards to so-and-so, that kind of stuff. So that's what's going on here. And he says, salute Rufus. Now, where is Rome? It's in Italy. Remember the journey started in Libya, that's Africa. They met Jesus outside Jerusalem, which is Asia. And now he is in Rome, Europe. How did the Simon family end up there? Because he goes on to say, salute Rufus, Okay, greet Rufus, chosen Lord, and his mother and mine. How did Mrs. Simon become like a mama to the apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament? I don't know. You don't know. So let's make it up. <laughs> At least I'm telling you. When Pastor Troy does that, he doesn't even tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting there saying, he's making that up. <laughs> I don't know if the boys were able to go to the Passover. But somehow, they are back home. Mrs. Simon wants to know what happened. Boys say, mama, mama, they almost killed daddy. And they, they tell the whole story. After that is over, Simon says something to Mrs. Simon. No. Don't you wish the Bible would tell us full stories as to what happened? Have, I wonder what did Jesus say to Simon when he picked up his cross? Hey, man, where you been? 
He should have met me down the road there. I've been looking for you. Can't hardly see you. Something happened between Jesus and this foreigner known Simon from Tripoli, Libya. Something happened as Jesus stumbled next to him and Simon carried his cross. Something, some conversation took place that by the time he got back home, some conversation took place between Simon and Mama Simon. They got a U-Haul. Read your Bibles, obviously you all don't. <laughs> and they moved to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, there's a man who's Rabbi Saul, later to become Apostle Paul. On the road to Damascus, he gets saved in Acts chapter 9. He ends up somehow in the Simon household. In the Simon household, Mama Simon somehow becomes like a mother, mentor to him, a coach to him. Influencer, see you never know whose life you're influencing. Because at that time, it was just a boy in their house, but she had no idea this is going to be the Apostle Paul. And then somehow, the Simon family then relocated in Italy. And now they are leaders in the church. Paul is about to go over there saying, hey, <laughs> tell your mama hello. I'm on my way. The benefits of saying yes is that he's got some intergenerational blessings for you. He's got some intercontinental blessings from you. From Africa to Asia to Europe. From your children to your... At the end of the service, there'll be children and adults and, and people who are in the educational system passing through here and they'll be laying on of hands and they'll be praying for you. You know why? Because the decisions that we as parents make for our children are not just for our generation, but nobody knew. And uh, Simon did not know that Rufus would be a leader and elder in the Roman church. The decisions you make as a parent are intergenerational. They go from generation to generation to generation to generation. Simon was there. The Holy Spirit compelled him. But God had such big blessings in store for him. In the middle of his disappointment, God had the divine appointment. The question remains, do you remember how we started? Why me? Why here? So what? All that happens when God is bringing your life together one step at a time. That's the decision that is before us today. It all hinges on you saying yes. So Lord, I thank you for your word. Dear sisters and brothers in this room and online, all over the world, all over the United States, who from time to time wonder, why me? Why here? So what? In a moment, help us to make the right decision for you. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one's looking around. In this room, in your room online, if you're online, there's a button at the bottom with a hand. You can respond through that. I wonder if the Holy Spirit's been talking to you, saying, this is what you need to do, but you've been arguing with him. It could be about forgiving somebody. It could be inviting so-and-so. It could be about sharing Jesus with a coworker, a neighbor. It could be investing more in the kingdom of God. It could be a relationship. But the Holy Spirit has been stalking to you, and for some reason or the other, you have not said yes. But today, in this room, and in your room online, you want to say yes. If you're here and online, and you just want to say yes to the Lord, I will do it. Yes, because the blessings will outweigh my present conundrum. I'm going to count till three. Just lift up your hand, and let me pray with you. One, two, three. Can I see your hands? Wow, wow, wow. 
So Lord, I pray for every hand that's raised right now. Every hand that's raised that's saying, I say yes. Lord, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we will also receive the blessing that Simon and his household encountered again and again in their life because we said yes. Every head still bowed, every eye still closed. You can put your hands down. The greatest yes anyone says to the Lord is, yes, you are my Lord. Yes, forgive me of my sins. Yes, make me your son, make me your daughter. Yes, I want to enter the kingdom of God. Yes, I want to be saved. In a moment, I'm going to count to three. You want to give your life to the Lord? Just lift up your hand, I'll pray with you. Maybe at one time, you served the Lord with gladness in your heart, but then a roadside incident happened and life happened, and you're not serving him like you know you need to, and you want to rededicate your life to him today. I'm going to count to three, lift up your hand as well. Just so that God can help you. One, two, three. Can I see your hands? Keep your hands up there. Keep your hands up there. Keep your hands up there. I see them. I see them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All the way in the back. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I see that hand right there at the bottom of the steps. 17, 18. I count at least 18. I know there are more. I just can't see them. Online, you can hit that hand button as well. I want everyone to repeat this prayer after me. Everyone. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming in this world, dying for me so I could live. I give my life, give you my all. You're my king. You're my Lord. From this day on, I will serve you forever and ever and ever and ever. Now, Lord, we put our hands together, give you praise in this place. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Come on, celebrate. Rejoice. Give him glory. Give him praise. Come on, come on. This is your day. This is your hour. I'm here. I'm here. You have a plan for my life. I'm going somewhere. I'm on trajectory. Come on. Lord, you got a plan. I'm in the middle of that plan. Why me? Why here? So what? I know what you're doing in my life. I know what. Come on. Just five more seconds. Just five more seconds. Come on. So everyone together, get your hands out. Get your hands out. We can just go two quick times. One with the words. One without the words. The last one we will go like this, huh? So let me rehearse for you. Why me? Why here? So what? Ready? One, two, three. Why me? Now without the words, without the words. When, one, two, three. God bless you. Come on. Awesome. Come on, give Jesus a big hand clap for that. Isn't that awesome? Give it up for Dr. Chan, isn't that great? Fantastic, fantastic. Remain standing, don't go anywhere. If you, we're gonna do something really cool, but I have some direction for you to do this. If you are a student, if you are an administrator, if you are in this room right here, uh, you're an educator, you're a teacher, you're a professor at a college, whatever, I want you to get out of your seat right now and I want you to go to that door right there on the right side because we want you to get in line because we want to pray for you. So right now, if you could exit and go that way, if you're a homeschooler, if you're a teacher, if you are a college student, if you're a high school student and you want to be prayed for, just get out of your seat. Go straight through that right door right there. We want to get you in line. We're going to have our leaders come up to the front. If you could, come up to the front right now, leaders. We're going to have two lines facing each other, and we're going to have people pass through the middle. Now, everybody look at me. Look at me. I know a lot going on, but I want you to look at me. Look at me. We're going to do this together as a church. I know we have leaders up here, but we want you to participate. So we're going to worship God, and I want you to stretch your hands out and pray as we are praying and laying hands on each one of these students. We're believing for God's protection. We're believing for God's favor. We're believing for God to do something significant in the schools through each one of these students, each one of these teachers, each one of these administrators, each one of these principals. We have several principals. 
for several uh, school involvement with the whole Mecklenburg County Schools and Cabarrus County Schools. We have several people that are involved in that area. And how many of you know that the world can take prayer out of schools, but we're going to put it right back in as a result of what God's doing right here. What we're also going to do is at the end, our kids are going to go through and they're going to go back to their class. So parents, do me a favor. I know your kids are probably going to walk right in front of you and they're going to wave and hey, mom, hey, daddy. Pick them up in the classes afterwards, okay, just like normal. Don't grab them on their way out because it'll mess everything up, okay. It'll mess our whole flow up and all of the system that we have going on. So if you could do that, and our worship team is going to be leading us in this song together. So we're going to pray for them really quickly and believe God for do miracles. Amen? Come on, let's do it. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you so much for every student. We thank you for favor, for protection. In Jesus' name, church, stretch your hands out to him and let's believe by faith. Stop.